Good morning, praise the Lord, everybody, for this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in this day. Thank you so much for tuning in with us today again on Facebook, and we pray that you are enjoying all of these messages. I'm Bobby Daniel, co-pastor of the Woodbury Miracle Fellowship Center, along with our pastor, Bishop Thomas Daniel. We'll be bringing the message today concerning the Prince of Life. Yes, the Prince of Life. He will also be doing a series of preaching on looking unto Jesus. Thank God for that promise that we can look unto Jesus because we don't have nobody else, nothing else that we can look unto but Jesus Christ. He's the answer to every solution today. We are looking at a lot of things. We are looking at a lot of things. We see so much, so much happening all around us. But our eyes should be focused on the things, on the one who says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus came from his Father to give us a look at what God has prepared for us. All we got to do is believe in him and he will get us to the Father. Yes, my friend, if you stay focused on Jesus, he will give you a whole new life. What a promise, a whole new life. Thank God for his word today. Now, receive with me today our pastor, Bishop Thomas Daniel from the Woodbury Miracle Fellowship Son of Church. Praise the Lord, everybody. So glad to have you with us on today. Amen. God is a good God. Yes, he is. And we're grateful, amen, for your presence with us. Let us pray, Father. We thank you for your goodness. We pray that you give us wisdom and knowledge and the revelation of your will. Hide us behind your glory that the people may see you and not us. We thank you, God, for your goodness, your mercy, your kindness, Lord. Touch our hearts and we give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yes, we're dealing with a series of messages uh, concerning, amen, looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. If ever was a time that we need to focus on Christ, now is that time. Amen. The world is looking for the church, amen, to stand up, amen, and be that light. We are the light of the world, and now it's time for us to stand up and look to Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. You find us in Acts, the third chapter, the third chapter of the book of Acts, amen, looking at that 14th and 15th verses, amen, Acts, the third chapter, the 14th and the 15th verses, and 14th verse, amen, reads, but he denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you and kill the Prince of Life yes. whom God had raised from the dead where are we are witnesses. I want to use that 15th verse. You have killed the Prince of Life whom God has raised from the dead. Where are we, our witnesses? You look at, looking at this third chapter in the book of Acts, amen, the disciples, amen, had walked with Jesus and yet didn't really believe all that he had said. Yes, my friend, they had seen him do miracles. They had seen him heal uh, blinded eyes. They had seen him feed 5,000 men. They had, amen, seen him heal, amen, the woman with the issue 
of blood, yet they had some doubt on who he really was. They doubted him. And he says that, amen, we who have never seen him yet believe we are greater because we were not there over 2,000 years ago when he was here in Nazarene. But yet we believe, and when we believe today, we are greater. Our faith is greater because we did not see him. But yet we believe in him as if we were there ourselves. Amen. In John 1 and 4, it says, in him was life. Yes. Amen. Jesus came to bring life to a dying world. And Adam, we had all died. And Jesus came to bring life. So uh, John said in 1 and 4, in him was life. And that life was the light of men. Yes. When Jesus comes into your life, I don't care what darkness has been in your life. When Jesus shows up and come into you, take a board. When the Holy Ghost comes in and take a board in your life, amen, light comes with it. You become the light of the world, amen, simply by knowing Jesus. In him was life, and that light was the light of men. And that light shined in darkness, and darkness comprehended not. In other words, when you got Jesus, I don't care what dark past you came from. He's able to to light up your life. I don't care if you were in drugs, he'll take it away. I don't yes. care if you were in lust, he'll take it away. Yes. Whatever you were in darkness with, darkness cannot comprehend, amen, what that light is gonna do. When you walk in a room at night and you flip the switch on, light automatically comes in. Once you turn this flip, uh, switch off, amen, darkness creeps back into your, your life. So when you got Jesus, and you allow him to be the Lord of your life. The light is always on. He's always there to help you. He's always there, amen, to deliver and make a way for you. Acts 18 and 28, amen, Paul said, in him we live. In him we move. In him we have our being. In other words, when we got Christ in us, amen, we're alive. We, we can move. We can do things. Why? Because he is the hope of glory. He's everything that we need. He's all and all. He is, amen, the prince of life. Amen. John 6 and 63. Amen. Jesus said the words that I speak, all right. they are spirit. And the words that I speak unto you, they are life. In other words, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, when you find Jesus talking, it's life in the words. We have to have revelation. The Holy Ghost comes to give us revelation on what he is saying. But there's life in the word. When Jesus was on the cross and said it is finished, amen, and he gave his blood, amen, that finished one. mean that all things have been accomplished. All things are not ready. What am I talking about? You can be healed. You can be delivered. You can be set free. I don't care. You're not in bondage. You don't know whom the son set free. It's free indeed. Just go ahead about your life. Begin to live. You don't have to worry about your past. God takes your past and Throw it in a sea called forgetfulness and don't even remember it no more. He start adding up your life from the day you received Jesus. A new book is written on you the day you receive Jesus. It's the book of life. Amen. Jesus is the prince of life. Galatians 2 and 20. I am crucified, Paul is saying, with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Amen. Yet not I, but Christ lives on the inside. Neighbor, we're not doing this alone. But we have something in us. We have the power of God in us. We have the Son of God in us. We have God in us. Amen. And who can harm us if we follow him? If Who can harm us? Who can hurt us? All things work together for our good when we have Christ. When we have the Prince of Life. On the inside of us. Let's look at our text on today in this third chapter, amen, of the book, amen, uh, of Acts. Peter and John, amen, they were on their way to church. Mm -hmm. Amen. They were on their way to church and stopped by a man that had been born lame, amen, from birth. And all he did every, every Sabbath day, every Sunday, whatever, amen, he would come to the church and ask for alms. In that fourth verse of the third chapter, and Peter fastened his eyes on him mm -hmm. with John and said, look on us. 
I wonder about that because we're dealing with looking unto Jesus. But here, Peter is asking the man, uh, look on us. Now, now we, we are here and we're coming, amen, to the temple today. But look on us. And that fifth verse uh, adds a little bit more clarity to it. He said, and he gave heed. The man gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something. He was looking to receive money. They told him, look on us. In other words, he was looking to get some money out of them. Amen. But Peter said in that sixth verse, and then Peter said, silver and gold. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Silver and gold. Have I none? But such as I have, give I unto thee. Now this man really... He really wanted some money, okay? He really uh, needed some financial help. And Peter told him, look on us, look on us. We're going to give you something. It's not money, but we're going to give you a new life. We're going to cause you to live a whole new way. In other words, we, we didn't believe a lot of what our Jesus taught us. We were his disciples. But now we're going to, we've been to Pentecost. And the Holy Ghost came and gave us power from on high. But Acts 1 and they say, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So John, let's try out this power here. Right. And, and he told us, wait a minute. In the name of Jesus, don't have no money for you. I'm wondering why they went to church broke. But don't have no money for you. But in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, yes. rise up. And walk. The man really wasn't looking to walk that day. He had never walked in his life. He All he wanted was some money. And they said, look on us. We're going to give you something you never had. Mm -hmm. We're going to use the name of the man that we followed for three years. And they used that name. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Not only did they use the name. Seventh verse. And he took him by the right hand. And lift it. Oh my God. When the last time you helped somebody? When the last time you lifted a person's spirit? When the last time you gave a person that was down, you gave them light, you gave them love, you showed them joy, you showed them peace. Peter grabbed a man by the hand and, and lifted him up. Mm -hmm. And immediately his feet and anchor bones received strength. The man was born blind. His parents had never seen that child walk but by Peter and John going to church one day after receiving the Holy Ghost. Amen. Going to church one day. All of a sudden the power of God saturated his life. Strengthened his anchor bones and it, it is and his joints and all of a sudden strength enough came and you know what he did he didn't just get up that eight verse he leaped when God get a hold of your life when the prince of life come into you he'll give you a new step he'll give you a new walk he'll give you a new talk he'll give you a new attitude you may have been depressed all your life but when light comes in when the life of Jesus comes into your heart Amen. You will be able to leap for joy. And he leaping stood up and walked something he had never done in his life. And in it with them. He went to church that day. He didn't just go to church. He went to church. Walked in the temple. Walking and leaping and praising God. He was not praising Peter and John. He was praising the God of Peter. And the God of John. Oh, what a miracle. What a mighty miracle. They had seen Jesus doing these miracles. But you know what? When the power of God came on the inside of them, Jesus said, greater works shall you do than, than, than what I have done. Amen. It's more of us. Amen. If thou canst believe, all things are possible when we believe in God's. Amen. Let's look at that 12th verse. Amen. A couple of points I'd like to bring out in that 12th verse. Amen. The first point, amen. Uh, this was not us. It was not about us. But it was about Jesus. 12th mm -hmm. verse. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? 
Or why look ye so earnestly on us as though by our own power of holiness we had made this man to walk? Peter, amen, he reverenced Jesus so much that he didn't take no glory. He didn't take no honor. Don't look at us. He had told the man to look at him in the fourth verse. But when the man got here, he told the people, don't you look at us. But that 13th verse, then the God of Abraham, Peter began to explain who had, what had happened. The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, had glorified his son, whom you delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate. When he was determined to let him go, Pilate wanted to let Jesus go, but 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 you denied him. You 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 wanted uh, uh, another man, Barabbas, to go free instead of Jesus. You denied him, but that same Jesus that you denied, yes. oh, the one that you denied, is not about us, but it's about him. Yes. Even that 14th verse really explains it. He said, but ye denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer Barabbas to go free. The Pilate said, I'm going to release one of them, either Barabbas or Jesus. Mm -hmm. The folks hollered, release a murderer Barabbas, crucify. Mm -hmm. And you know what today? I'm so glad they did. Yeah. I'm so glad that he stayed on that cross. I'm so glad that he gave his life. That 15th verse is what Peter really brought out in our text today. And you kill the prince of life. God, whom God had raised from the dead. You kill the man who came to give us life. In Adam we all died, but in Jesus Christ we all have been made alive. You kill the prince of life whom God had now raised from the dead and all we are, we are witness. That's why I come before you every Sunday at 11 o'clock and I preach the same thing. Somebody said, well, why don't you get something new? No, 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 no. The, it's the same gospel. It's the same witness. I'm witnessing to you that he got up. How do I know? Because one day in 1964, he stepped in my life. I was not expecting it, but all of a sudden, the old folks said, something got a hold of me. I don't know what it was at that day, but now I know it was the Prince of Life. He came into my life and literally turned my life around and he's been doing it for millions of people and neighbor you that's looking to me right now I don't care what you may be in pain of I don't care what you may be going through he can turn that situation around why because life is in him hope is in him amen and he is the prince of life it was not about Peter and John it was about who was in them. It's not about us, but it's about Jesus. They killed the prince of life. God raised him back up from the dead with all power in his hand. Amen. What a witness. What a great witness. That 15th verse. And his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you now see and know. You knew him all his life and had never seen him walk. But today, he's walking with us in the temple. How did it happen? The same man you killed, the one that died on the cross, he died for this man's sin, he died that he may receive his healing. He died that he may live a life like you have lived all of your life. And how did we do it? We used his name. Somebody said, that's something about that name. We used 
his name. In other words, Peter told us, in the name of Jesus, he reached out. <laughs> Amen. In the name of Jesus, there's power in that name. And we have access. The same Jesus that's in us, the same Holy Ghost that's in us, we have access to use his name. He told us before he left. Amen. I'm going back to my father, but, but you have access to use my name, whatever you ask. In my name, my father would give it unto you. Peter at that moment used the name of Jesus and his ankle and, and, and joints received strength enough for him to get up and walk. I dare you right now to holler Jesus I, at home. Amen. Ain't nobody there but you. Amen. Maybe your family members, they won't think you're crazy. Just say Jesus three times. Jesus once. Jesus tried. Jesus the third time. He is there right now. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That don't just mean being saved from cancer. That means being saved from any disease because all diseases were taken care of at Calvary. And with his stripes, we can be healed. We can be delivered. We can be saved simply by calling on the name of Jesus. There is something about that name. Yes. Kings and kingdoms are all faded away and passed away. But there's something about that name. His name is Jesus. When, 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 he, when he was birthed, amen, they didn't know really what name to give him. And Mary told him what name he should be called. He should be called Jesus. For he shall save his people from that sin. This was just no ordinary child here. This was the son of God. Joseph didn't have nothing to do with this. This was the son of God and he came into the world. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. I was lost one day. My, my, my wife was lost one day. But he came into our lives. And now we are preaching and teaching and encouraging the whole world. We want the whole world to know that he is the prince of peace. That term prince means the, the son of a king. The son, uh, 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 he was the son of God. He's the prince of life. Life is in him. When Adam uh, Curse uh, did the sin in the garden when he Adam and Eve, amen. Sin came upon the world. But when Jesus Christ went to the cross, he paid the penalty for all of our sins. Now we can live in him. Now we can live in him. If we go down to that, amen, 19th verse, it read, Repent ye, therefore, and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. In other words, what I'm asking you to do is that the Prince of Life is knocking. He's knocking at your door. Not at the front door, but he's knocking at the door of your heart. And if any man will open up his heart and allow him to come in, all of the destruction in you that you were born with, when you open up your heart to him, and I, you, you don't see it. You don't see it. You can't look at him coming in, but you know by a change taking place on the inside. That's what happened to me. I didn't literally know what was happening to me when I was 15 years old. All I know was something had touched me. Something had saturated me. Something had, had taken over my life. And for 50 some years, I've never been the same again. I tried to run away, but you can't run from this. Amen. Any man that's in Christ, he's a new creature. All things pass away. Behold, all things become new. And all I had to do was repent. Neighbor, all you got to do is for him to come in is to repent. What does repent mean? It means feeling godly sorrow for what you did last night. Feeling godly sorrow for what you've done all your life. Neighbor, you were born in sin, shaped in iniquity. You're supposed to do what you've done. That's all you know to do. But once you meet the Prince of Life, 
once you come in contact with Jesus, I said, well, you keep drawing me and drawing me. Listen, you don't come to him. He called you. Many are called, but few are chosen. He has chosen you, my friend. That's why you keep tuning in. That's why you're wondering what we're talking about. We're talking about life. We're talking about learning how to live a new way of living. Walking away from this world. Stepping into a whole new kingdom where God is the Father. Jesus is at the right hand of God and the Holy Ghost will come and take a board in your life and teach you what Jesus taught. What he taught, they had revelation, they had to have revelation of what he taught them. But when you get the Holy Ghost, it will reveal who Jesus was, how he was the Prince of Peace and neighbor. Jesus has connection with his father. He said, whatsoever I ask my father, he will give it to me. And if you ask in my name, he will give it to you by you calling on the name of Jesus. You open up a new door for life to come into you. You open up a new avenue for life. You got to repent. You got to feel godly sorry for of your sin if, 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 if you're drinking and, and you say well all coming to my life but you, you, you're drinking tomorrow and you're drinking next week and, and no, 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 no. He, that, that, amen, when you get Jesus, you walk away from your past. You walk away from your old life. Amen. Now, that woman's house you in. I, I better leave this alone. But that woman house you in and you ain't got no license to be in that house. Amen. When you get Jesus, you got to walk away. You got to go home to your own home. Live in peace. Mm -hmm. The prince of life. Jesus is. You got to repent. You got to turn around. Live a new way. Live a new life. Start all over. Again. And that is through Jesus. He said repent. You therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Jesus, God will blot out everything you've done. Your whole past will vanish. You become a new creature in him. And when the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, and, and, amen, in that, that 20th verse, and he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. Won't it be grand? Yes. Won't it be grand? What a mighty God that we serve. In this series on looking unto Jesus, every Sunday I want to bring in a new aspect of who he really is. Last week we dealt with Revelation. Uh, Revelation said that he was Alpha in Revelation. Jesus told him, Alpha and Omega. I'm the beginning and the ending. You then want to use a new word, amen, and the word is advocate. The word is advocate. And the term means support. One who supports you. An advocate is a person that's supporting you. It also one who speaks on your behalf. Things that you may not know when you go to God on what to say. You have an advocate. You have help. Someone to know how to talk to God until we really learn how to worship him. You have an advocate. And also that term means one who defends your right. Everybody born have a right to be free. Sin brings us into bondage. So what we needed was an advocate. And when Jesus went to Calvary, he was in the process of advocating our sins. In other words, one who helped us. He took our sins upon him. He advocated our sins. He took all of our sins, all past, present, and future sins. Because sometimes when you got Jesus, you may mess up, but we know we have an advocate. We know we have help, one who defends us, amen, when we do wrong, amen. And also it said, Jesus go before God. Oh, isn't it wonderful? Yeah. He's at the right hand of God. So when we do wrong, Jesus go before God and stand in our place. 
God don't really, when you repent, God don't really see the low downness of you because all he's looking at is his son Jesus. And he realized that the blood has already made atonement for everybody's sin. So he go before God, stand in our place for our sins and defend and plead our case to his father. A case that became because of him has already been won. Listen, you already been set free. You just need the advocate to go before the Father for you. In Adam, we all die. In Christ, we all can be made alive. Everybody that called on the name of Jesus can be made alive. You don't have to die and go to a burning hell. But you can wake up in heaven. You can wake up when the shout shall come from the clouds. You can wake up in him. Those that die in Christ sleep in him. We sleep away. Paul said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. He is the prince of life. He's already advocated our situation. An advocate be described as an attorney. Attorney. Amen. When you go to court and you know you did wrong and your sister going before the judge, you need somebody to plead your case and you have to pay. You have to pay for that. You have to pay dearly. Some attorneys cost five and six thousand dollars and they're not going to handle your case. They're not going to plead your case and stand in for you until you pay them. Then when they get their money, they go in the judge's office and mediate that case while you out there in, in the courtroom. Talk with the judge. They know, they know how to communicate with the judge. They talk to the judge. And when they come back, all the judge say, we find you a thousand dollars in case this miss. The work was done in the, in the office. Your sins have been taken care of at the cross. He mediated your sins. He defended you at the cross by dying and sharing his blood for your sin. Then turned around and said, Whosoever will, let him come. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. In other words, he want all of us to come. My job is to direct you on how to get to him. See, see, you're lost and you're wondering and sin and wondering in your life. My job is to direct you, to let you know that he's calling you. Hallelujah. He's calling you. I, I feel a call right now. He's calling you to him. Whosoever will, let him come. Come unto me. I'll give that name. Come to Jesus. And the song said, Right now, don't, don't wait tomorrow. Tomorrow may be too late. Folks are dying every day. This coronavirus is taking folks by the thousands every day. But when you got God in you, oh my God, when you got no greater power than the power of Jesus Christ, and no corona, no, no virus can take that away from you. There is no weapon that can be formed against you that will be able to prosper. Uh, I heard a prophet tell me today that said, listen, some pastors have died, mm -hmm. but it's not because of the virus. It's because God took them. God wanted them. And God, I, uh, my father-in-law used to say all the time, the devil can't kill me until God gets through with me. Oh, what a blessing. Hope to know that God is not finished with us. Amen. He's not through with you. That's why you're still here. He could have taken you out, but he's not through with you. He's calling you. He's calling you. Every day, there's a, a something in you that's asking you, that's begging for you to come. Come to Jesus right now. He'll take your past. He'll take your sins and throw them in a sea called forgetfulness. Never to remember them no more. He sent his son to do the dirty work. He sent his son to die 
on the cross. The reason why he had to die on the, on the cross was because it was cursing for any man that would die on a cross because he had to be a crook. He had to be a sinner. He had to be a thief like the two thieves that were on Jesus' side. But they killed an innocent man that day. They killed the prince of life. And three days later, God gave him new life. For 50 days he was on earth to prove that he had came back alive. Then he went back to the Father, sat at his right hand, and now he's advocating for us. He is being a media. He's being our lawyer. We don't have enough money to pay him. You don't have to pay him. Just live for him. And he's going to come back and get you. Come back and take you back. He said, my father's making room for you. He's making room. Many good rooms in my father's kingdom. He's waiting for you. Come on. Come on. Don't you want to go? Come on. Come on. You can go. Let us pray right now. Father, I'm talking to about a hundred people, Lord that don't know you. And I pray right now that your word would penetrate their hearts and their minds and their spirit. And they would feel a quickening for that quickening give life. They will feel a quickening in their spirit. And that feeling that they are feeling, they may not be able to see you, but they can feel a change. There's a wind blowing. There's, a, there's rain coming down in their lives. A new beginning is about to happen in their spirit. Old things will begin to pass away and behold, all things will begin to become new. Touch them right now. Hallelujah. Friend, I'm, I'm asking you right now to repeat after me. Father God, I repent. You got to repent. Father God, I repent of all my sins, everything that I've done in my life. I ask you to forgive me. I want to be your child. I want to know you. I want you to come into my life. I want to receive your Holy Spirit in me. I want to receive the Holy Ghost in me right now. Lord, come in and take a board in my life. Help me right now, Lord. And I serve you the balance of my life. I want to live in paradise with you. I want to live in heaven with you. I want to know you in a real way. Neighbor, that's it. The work has already been done at Calvary. You are a candidate right now for eternity. As a matter of fact, St. John 3 and 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and whosoever believeth in him. If you believe in Jesus, you can have everlasting life. It's there with you right now. You've hooked up to the advocate. You've hooked up to God's son. Now, you know the son of the president of the world. You know the son of of the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. You know the right man when you know Jesus. Hallelujah. And I, I meet you in the mid air one day. Oh, I'm going to be there. He that has this hope in him purifies himself. When I stumble or when I mess up, I hurry up and repent and, and get it straightened up. Why? Because I'm determined to not to see my running in vain. I, I, I'm, I got to finish. Oh, I got to finish. Paul said, I fought a good fight. I've got to finish my course. There's a crown waiting on me. There'll be a crown waiting on you, neighbor. Oh, I want you to go. Hey, Amen. I want to see you in line. Say, hey, man, you're the man that I heard. You're the man that I heard on, on, on Facebook. You're the man that encouraged me to know Jesus. Somebody encouraged me. I'm trying to encourage you. Remember, Jesus is the Prince of Life. Looking unto Jesus. Until next week, this is Amen. Lady Daniels and Dr. Daniels saying Amen. Uh, we love you and we really do. May God bless you is our prayer. God bless you until next week.